Hello everyone, in this video I'll introduce you to the MPLAB XIDs GUI, which stands for Graphical User Interface, and explain everything you need to know for a beginner. Then I'll show you useful shortcuts and mechanics that will make writing your code a lot easier. So let's get started. I'll use the first example project from the last video as a reference. Let's go through everything you can see here. I can't explain everything, but I'll talk about the things you'll commonly use. Let's start with the toolbar. Top left are your project related buttons, used to generate files, create projects, open projects, and save your progress. Next to it are undo and redo buttons, which shouldn't need explanation. Next to it is your project configuration. You can create other configurations to select from this menu, which can be file specific or including just a part of your project. You can pretty much change everything about your project and switch between the configurations, but this is a bit more advanced and product stuff, so most of the time you'll use the default one you created during project creation and stick to it. Next to it are your run options. First one is build main project. Building a project means to create everything needed to put your code into your microcontroller. It will create the assembly and machine code so that it can be loaded to your microcontroller, which also means when you build your project, you'll see if your code is written correctly, meaning if it's compilable. If it's not, you'll get an error. One thing you need to know is that whenever you build, some intermediate files get generated. So if you build again right after building, the second build should be faster. Only the changed files will be built from scratch again. This also means that if you interfere and delete or copy paste files, you'll likely get an error. This is when the next option comes into play. Next option is clear and build main project. Cleaning deletes these intermediate files and builds the project from scratch, which should get rid of those errors. But from my experience, even though cleaning files fixes some errors, rarely I come across errors that don't get fixed like this. A restart usually fixes them, so if you encounter that type of error, restarting your ID might be the solution. The next two options are run and make and program device. The reason why I'm referring to them at the same time is because they pretty much do the same thing. I think the program device button is supposed to program your microcontroller and hold it in reset, while run does the same without holding it in reset. But both do the exact same thing and program the microcontroller and let it run without resetting, so I don't know. If we click on the drop down arrow, we can also select erase device memory option, which as the name suggests, removes all code and variables from your microcontroller. Next up is read device memory. You usually won't use this option unless you code in assembly. If you read a microcontroller, you can see what operations it contains, provided it allows you to, meaning it can be blocked. Go to window tab and select target memory views. Here you can see all parts of your microcontroller and what they contain. If I go to program memory and scroll down, you can see the code that this microcontroller contains. Next up is hold and reset button, which does exactly what it says. It will change to release from reset after activating it. By the way, this is a toggle, meaning you can program your microcontroller when it's in hold in reset condition, and after your programming is completed, your microcontroller won't run and will be kept in reset. I'll leave these next buttons since they are for debugging, and I'll make a dedicated video for debugging PIG microcontrollers in the future. The buttons here are for text editing. Honestly, I forgot they even existed since I don't use them. Also, you can click this history button to see your change logs if you want. You can also edit multiple files if you want. Just drag the file down like this. It's kind of laggy, so be patient. Let's talk about file management. The projects tab on the left will be your main tab for the most part. You can create files anywhere, but try to keep it organized. Header files, meaning .h files, should go to header files directory. And source files, meaning .c files, should go to source files directory. You can right click on the tabs and select new logical folder to create subdirectories under them to further organize your code. As for the important files directory, you can put anything related to your project that doesn't fit in any other category, like PDF files or something. You can't drag files here, but you can right click and select add item option to add them instead. You won't be using linker files directory, so you can forget about it, but here's an explanation as to why if you're curious. Libraries directory is where you put library files, which I'll explain in a future video, but you can forget about it for now. Loadable directory is used to store files related to combining projects and .hex files. This is mainly used for bootloaders or advanced code modularity, which we won't be tackling since those are very advanced stuff, so you can forget about this directory as well. It's mainly for companies and not the individuals. The files tab up top, as I've said in previous videos, is how the project files are physically stored on your computer but it also contains your projects as .hex file. 
We can never get to here for that. Let's get to the dashboard. The dashboard contains information about your current project. I'll only talk about the important things you'll need to know so it doesn't get complicated. This is the name of your project, and this is your project type. You selected these when creating this project. It also tells you that the project configuration is selected as default, which is what's selected on the configuration menu I've talked about up here. This is the project your microcontroller is targeting for. This is your selected compiler. These two show you how much memory you've got left on your microcontroller. Since you selected your microcontroller on project creation, the IDE knows how much memory that microcontroller has. And because the IDE is what creates your machine code, it also knows how much of it will be used in the process. Every time you build your project, these bars will be updated and show you your remaining memories. The top one is your RAM. The more variables you create, the more of this will fill. And the bottom one is your program memory. The more operations you do and the more variables you initialize, the more of this will fill. It also tells you how much memory you have in total, which you can also find in the datasheet, along with how much free space you have. This is the target debugger or programmer you've chosen. And this part is about debugging, which again, I'll make a dedicated video about in the future. This button opens your project properties, the same that we talked about up here. This button refreshes the status of your debugger or programmer, whichever you're using. This one is about debugging, so I'll skip it. This button opens the datasheet for your microcontroller, the one you're targeting, up here. And this button opens up a help page for your compiler. This is where your outputs and all kinds of results and ID-based configurations and etc. will be displayed. Right now, I only have the outputs option. In there, there's a picket3 tab, which displays the responses of picket3 to the IDE's commands. And the next one is my project's result outputs. These have opened on their own after building the project but you can close or open them manually as well using the Windows menu above, among other options. I won't explain every menu since most of them are self-explanatory or already exist here as a button or I'll talk about in the future. Now let's talk about some useful shortcuts. By default, holding Alt and scrolling your mouse wheel will zoom in or out from the text. Holding down Control and clicking something will open the file and the location to its initialization or source. So if I click the config.h file I've included on this code, it will open up the file for me. We can also use this on variables to get to where they are initialized. For example, if I define a variable in the config.h file and use it in my .c file, I can click on x while holding down control to go to its initialization folder and location. This also works the same way for definitions or functions. You can even use it to open files that come with the compiler. If I click xc.h definition the same way, I can go to that file and inspect what it does. The autocomplete in this IDE is not as aggressive as some of the other IDEs. Say you created a variable with a long name. Instead of copy pasting it or writing it down each time you want to use it, you can write its name partially and press Ctrl and spacebar to bring up the autocomplete menu which will show you defined functions, variables, definitions, constants, and etc. It also tells you the details about variables, and if exists, comments about the given functions that you can select to autocomplete. You have to do it each time you start writing something though, but once it's active, it will stay there until you're done typing and update in real time. Next up is a useful trick, especially for microcontroller coding. Let's say you want to create a bunch of similar variables like this back to back. There's an even easier way of doing this. Click at the row you want to copy, press and hold Ctrl and Shift, and press up or down arrow, which will duplicate that row either above or below it, depending on the arrow you pressed. Then you can do your modifications easily. Next shortcut. Let's say you want to modify all of these rows. You can click this rectangular selection button over here, or use its shortcut Ctrl Shift R to enable it. This is a toggle, so you'll need to press it again to go back to normal. This will change your selection type as its name suggests. Now you can freely select a part of the word on each row and remove it. Or select it straight up and add more words in between as well. One last thing. We can do what is called code folding to shrink parts of your code by pressing this minus block on the left. This is great for shrinking longer projects, but it only lets you fold functions and etc. What if you wanted to fold certain parts of your code to group and name them as you like? There's an option for that in MPLAB. Click where you want this folding region to start and type FCOM, then press Tab. 
Make sure you do this without interruption and use lower cases or it won't work. This shortcut will generate a starting and an ending point for your foldable region in an XML format, but don't worry about the way it's written, this is just how it's implemented. You should see the same minus symbol on the left to fold this code. Put the code you want to fold in between them and press the minus symbol. And there you go. You can change its default state, which changes whether it will be folded or not when you first open the file, or change its description, which changes the text displayed when it's in folded state. You can also do this by selecting the code you want to fold, then clicking this light bulb that pops up on the left, and then pressing this option. Also, you can hover over the folded code to have a peek of what it contains, though you can't edit them from here. You can press Ctrl and F to bring up a search bar at the bottom. Whatever you type here will be highlighted, and you can look through the findings or configure the search options by using these buttons as well. Say you made a typo in your words, or you simply wanted to replace a certain word with another. Instead of replacing every single word one by one, you can press Ctrl and H to bring up the replace bar at the bottom. Input the word you want to replace here, type the word to replace with here, and click the replace all button here and there you go. Before ending this video, Microchip Developer website has a very good explanation for how building a project generates the machine code, step by step. You can give it a read if you are interested. It's beyond the scope of this video and it's relatively long, so I'll just leave a link below for it instead. And that's the end of the video and thank you for watching. If you liked the video, you can always leave a like and subscribe. It's always appreciated. And I'll see you in the next video.